This is the Nokia 9 PureView, and I've taken it on a tour all the way around central London to take photos of some of the highlights in the city, and essentially to answer the question, why do you need five cameras on the back of your phone? The journey started in St Pancras, pretty much the main train station in London, and just underneath it you got this beautiful light tunnel, so I had to take the first photo here. And it looks good, it looks clean, it looks sharp, but that's only really the start. You see, the Nokia 9 PureView shoots photos in RAW, which means you're capturing a lot of information, but to properly draw it out, you should be using something like Adobe Lightroom, which can turn that photo into this photo. There's more going on than just the apparent boost in saturation. We've really drawn out the texture in the floor, and if you look at the lighting panels on the right hand side, you can see the bright areas are really well controlled in our edited version. Okay, back over ground, and one of the main things I wanted to capture here was the outside of St Pancreas Station. It's a pretty old building, so it's got some really interesting architecture, and it's just so iconically London. So, this is what we got straight out the camera, and after playing around a bit with the RAW file, I ended up with this. Not a drastic change, but I've adjusted some of the colours, but take note of how well exposed the bright sky is. So, on our way to the next location, we thought, we're here, we might as well stop and do something in the London Underground. Turned out pretty great. We've got this one shot where the tube had just pulled in, and there's all kinds of lines of symmetry going on here, it looks really neat. The only thing that bothered me is the off-centre sign at the top, so with a bit of cropping and a bit of colour grading, this is the final result. A really dark, grungy photo that I think represents the London atmosphere quite well. Regent Street, right at the heart of London, and this place was just buzzing. There were so many people, so much traffic, those iconic red buses, and just crazy architecture that spirals into the sky. And out of it, this is the shot that I got, looking straight down the road. And I don't think this one needed much, so my adjusted version just has slightly darker shadows and a little bit more structure to highlight those buildings. The Nokia 9 PureView also has a bokeh mode, and because it's got five cameras capturing a massive amount of information, in theory it should be very good. This is the raw photo that came out the camera, and it doesn't look immediately great, but it's only when you start playing around with it in Lightroom that you realise how much information is actually there. Safe to say, the most impressive thing about the way this phone takes photos is how it handles high dynamic range. In fact, there wasn't a single photo I took throughout the entire day with it where the sky was so overexposed that details couldn't be recovered. Also, whilst I was on Regent Street, there was one more building that I just had to capture. This is the H&M store, this towering colossus of a building, and the only real tweaks I needed to make were a slightly warmer hue, and also a change in perspective to make it look like I was closer and looking up higher. We couldn't have a London photo shoot without at least visiting the Dockland area, and funnily enough we managed to walk directly into a storm. It was not only tipping it down, but the wind was so powerful people were actually getting blown around. The first stop while we were here is something they call the Monument, this giant towering, well, tower, and it's big. And so without an ultra-wide lens you would struggle to capture the whole thing in one shot. But nonetheless we got this, which I think looks pretty great, and with a monochrome filter and a pretty heavy vignette, it's quite an artistic looking shot. You might have already heard of a building called the Shard. It's actually the tallest in the entire country, a 95 floor skyscraper shaped like a shard of glass. To be honest, I really like how the base raw photo came out, but because we've got so much room to play around with here, I grabbed that saturation slider and threw it to the end of the scale, to really exaggerate the power of the storm we were in. There are a lot of great views from London Bridge. You can pretty much turn your camera in any direction and capture something picturesque. This was one of those examples, a nameless road with a view. The JPEG image that came straight out the camera was kind of already what I had in mind. It didn't need too much tweaking, I just basically made it a little darker, a little moodier. There's a separate point I wanted to make. This phone has five cameras, and a big part of what that's doing is capturing a depth map of whatever you're taking. So essentially every time you snap a photo, these five cameras are detecting the distance of all the different objects in your image, and that allows you to do this. You open up the photo in your photo editor, you decide how much depth of field you want, and then just tap on which object you want to be the focus, and either the foreground or the background will be blurred according to your preference. Generally speaking, it works really well. 
Now, from the other side of this bridge, looking backwards, you get arguably the best view we've had for this whole video. You get a whole cluster of skyscrapers, and I think our shot of this turned out really well. And at the point I was taking it, the sun was just peering out from the clouds after the storm, and so why not take advantage of that? Why not really exaggerate the warm hues of the sun reflecting off those buildings? Now that we were here already, we decided to take a second stab at the bokeh mode. And again, the difference between the before and the after is mind-blowing. It is game-changing. The raw photo and what it allows you to do shouldn't be underestimated. Our final shot was just as it was starting to get dark, a different angle of the shot, capturing the warm light at the inside of that building on the bottom, and also the cooler sky above. I think it's a nice contrast. Alright guys, so that was a bit of a different video. It took a long time to plan, film, and put together, so if you did enjoy it, it'd be massively appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel. And what do you think to the smartphone? What do you think to that ludicrous Penta camera setup on the back? Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.